And this, he said, was because some Quaker, some, he didn't say Quaker, he said some bad man had come from Eden into their midst. And there was something about him that made some people accept him. Some people owned him, he said. Others judged him. And so then they began judging each other because of this particular thing. Well, Cole labored very intensely for 10 weeks trying to overcome the strife, the division, the unhappiness, the clashing that took place in this community of love that uh, we've been talking about earlier. And when he departed, uh, going to uh, Virginia and then to Barbados, he felt that most of the difficulty was over and that, uh, in a sense, uh, the future was full of promise. And then he uh, pointed out something very important. He says, George Fox, as I write this letter to you, I want you to know that Maryland friends don't feel it's possible at this time to set up a colony of their own. This concept had arisen, leaving Maryland, this spot where they were so persecuted, and setting up a separate colony north of the Susquehannocks in what later became Pennsylvania, totally uninhabited as far as English people were concerned there. And we don't know where the idea came from, whether it was George Fox's, whether it was Josiah Coles, whether uh, Richard Preston, who had gone to England in 1659 and carried all sorts of messages over. We don't know whether it came from any of those, but uh, Maryland Quakers are now saying it's impossible First of all, there's no suitable land above the fort of the Susquehannocks. Secondly, there's constant warfare among the Indians in that northern area. And also that William Fuller, who was our chief man among the Indians, is no longer with us. He had to go into hiding, which is still another story. Uh, Josiah Cole was banished from Maryland in 1660, bringing him into his active work there. But... Uh, he proposed a third visit, he never made it, but he could never forget Maryland friends. And so he wrote a number of letters, uh, time after time, trying to give hope, comfort, encouragement, and correction as uh, the Maryland Quakers were still feeling their way into what Quakerism really is and what it means for our life and for our community. Joseph Bessie, uh, who wrote a large two-volume work that appeared in 1752 on the sufferings of the people called Quakers, lists a tremendous number of sufferings that Quakers had after uh, Josiah Cole left. Almost on the heel of Cole, there came a number of other friends, and I think probably I'll uh, telescope them. Uh, they were very interesting. Somebody like George Rolfe, who ultimately lost his life when he was on the Chesapeake in a small boat and a squall turned the boat over and he drowned. There was George Wilson who came with Rolfe but never got to come back again as he had hoped because when he was in Virginia, they arrested him. They uh, chained him to a log with an Indian murderer and the chains were so tight that his flesh decayed and he died of gangrene in prison at uh, Jamestown there. There were others who came along there, all of them trying to do what Cole had been trying to do, to bring order out of chaos, to bring uh, a new spirit of uh, understanding, a new spirit of uh, entering into the Quaker way. There was one Quaker that I probably ought to mention, a fellow named Robert Stake, or Stag, his name shows up in three or four different ways. And he was accompanied by William uh, Southby, whom we've mentioned in connection with that lost publisher, or first publishers of Truth in Maryland. And he uh, and uh, Southby went into two churches in St. Mary's County where they were charged with uh, disturbing the minister. And uh, Stag, uh, or Stack was uh, in prison. Somehow he escaped and he went north with several uh, other friends. I uh, went to Rhode Island, got there in time for that first general meeting in Rhode Island, which became the very beginning of New England yearly meeting. Uh, there were some others there, uh, a couple of women that I ought to uh, mention there. Uh, uh, Jane Millard was one of these. 
uh, somehow there seems to be peace quiet after the departure of most of these and then something terrible happened two other Quakers came to visit them from England a lot of American Quakers problems came out of England sooner or later don't quote me on this but it is true there uh, the first of these was a man named John Parrott John Parrott was one of the first uh, convinced people that Edward Burrough found in the Waterford area in Ireland a very gifted individual and uh, he was arrested in Ireland suffered a good deal proclaiming the message there he went on to England and then uh, he got a group of uh, six people five others besides himself four of which were Irish and then uh, a couple English both of them women Mary Fisher and uh, Mary Prince and they all started out for the Mediterranean apparently their desire was to get to the eastern end of the Mediterranean and uh, then proclaimed the message all the way through Greece uh, through Turkey and some of them had in mind getting to Jerusalem itself and uh, Mary Fisher actually got to visit the Sultan as you know who seemed to have been moved by at least he allowed her to live in there and uh, uh, Parrott and his fellow Irishman John Luff were caught by the English uh, consul at Smyrna and he sent them back to Venice and so they stayed in Venice for a little while proclaiming their message there and then uh, they decided to go to Rome why not clue the Pope in <laughs> on this new message and so they got there and the Inquisition got hold of them and John Luff died there at the hands of the Inquisition uh, Parrot says he was hanged by them uh, they said he starved himself to death in a fast there by the way I've got an article on early Quakers and fasting that deals with a lot of a lot of these people that we heard about in our presentation earlier looking at what fasting was to people like um, Margaret Fell and James Naylor and George Fox and others it'll be in Quaker history in about a year or so anyhow uh, Parrott was a prisoner there and he had nobody to talk to when John Luff died nobody to say John you're wrong nobody to say John have you really thought what you're doing or what you're saying and so his interpretation of Quakerism what it demanded of him became more and more individualistic and it became more and more weird sometime also finally he was released from prison uh, because Charles Bailey whom we've mentioned before Charles Bailey left Maryland went to England got a letter from Charles II recently back on the throne and went to Rome and after a time of being imprisoned himself by the Inquisition he was able to bring about his freedom and uh, John Parrott's and so Parrott got back to London and he uh, he became a very divisive disturbing sort of figure coming to question many of the things that Quakerism had already pretty well accepted for instance uh, the removal of the hat during prayer he says it doesn't need to be removed it's only an empty form unless the spirit tells you to take it off it's an empty form and then after a while he says the shaking of hands that's an empty form too if the spirit doesn't tell you to do it I tell you it's funny sometimes when you put your hand out to shake and nobody reciprocates there a very unquakerly sort of thing and he never went as far as one of his English followers I take it back in England he never went as far as one of his followers there who took the point of view uh, that uh, meeting at a specific time on a specific day was a form meeting Sunday at 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock that's an empty form you should only worship come together for worship when the Spirit leads you to do so now Parrott did not preach that in London he waited until he got to America to preach that <laughs> especially in Virginia and he nearly brought about the end of Virginia Quakerism because persecution was so strong down there 
that uh, during uh, 1663 and 4 when he was there, people could feel they were holier than anybody else by not going to meeting because the Spirit had told them they could escape persecution in that particular way.